are so excited to, that you're back again for another segment of Meet My Mississippi Authors and Artists. I have some amazing guests for you today, at, well, throughout the year, and today we have with us Hillary Hamlin. Tell us about yourself. Where are you from? Where did you go to school? Where did you graduate from high school? Okay. Uh, my family and I live in South Chilo, Mississippi right now, but I'm originally from Baldwin, Mississippi and graduated from high school there. Um, and my husband is from East Union, so we're North Mississippi folks. Wonderful, wonderful. And you have a, a business. You're an entrepreneur. I do. I am an entrepreneur. I started Momentum Consulting. We're a digital marketing agency. And I started that 11 years ago. Okay. Um, we started as an advertising agency about the time that social media really got kicked off. And that was the question a lot of businesses had. And nobody was really um, filling that, that position um, as far as helping people with advertising. It was brand new. Uh, media right there and we jumped on board and we've been working with social media and digital media for 11 years. Wonderful and I think you try to do some creative things don't you? One thing I love that you had the Elvis like Christmas you had the Christmas ball in the Elvis's hands or something a scarf or something around his neck something that you did. So. I, one of our <laughs> clients did a Christmas card with their staff in front of the Elvis statue okay. in Tupelo and so we try to help our clients to think outside the box right. and to think about local things and um, especially in Christmas cards a lot of businesses will hang those up and it's a great uh, advertising tool that people don't think about. Absolutely love that love that. Now we're going to get to your writing. When did you start writing? Was it in high school or junior high or when did you know that you wanted to write things just anything? It was in junior high mm -hmm. and in in those days we all bought binders that uh -huh. was the thing that year and this particular binder that all my friends had had a colored notebook in the back and for whatever reason the teachers didn't really care for us turning in uh -huh. I didn't want us turning assignments on colored paper okay. they preferred the white paper okay. and um, during class one day after we finished our work I started just writing this story and I wrote my entire notebook up and my friends wanted to read it and so then they would give me their notebooks and I think I filled about three different notebooks oh my goodness. with this story and I wish that I still have it I have no idea it's in a landfill oh somewhere I'm my sure. goodness um, I wish I still had it I'm sure it would not be worth very much but it would it be would. fun to look it would be fun to look back at what was um, the story a romance I don't even it was I was in the seventh grade, so I'm sure it was about seventh grade right, girl still. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember what it was about, but I do remember filling up those notebooks and just knowing that writing was something that I enjoyed. Okay. And originally I wanted to be a broadcast journalist. Mm -hmm. And I went to Mississippi University for Women mm -hmm. and got on the staff of the newspaper there. Mm -hmm. And when I saw my byline in the newspaper for the first time, I was hooked. And okay. I had changed my major from broadcast to print journalism. Okay. Um, and fun fact, my degree's in journalism and I have never worked one day at a newspaper <laughs> or magazine for that matter. I worked on our campus newspaper at the W and things with the print industry really started to change about the time mm -hmm. that I graduated and so my first job out of college was working with the Chamber of Commerce in Baldwin and helping businesses grow there and helping the community grow and I realized how much I really enjoyed working with businesses Absolutely. and so my current work with a digital marketing agency allows me to do that and allows me to help small businesses grow and in digital marketing it's content I love and it. content is writing and content yes. is being creative and and it's now it's videos and yes. pictures and Insta images as well Twitter, Instagram all that right stuff. but it's all about content and it's all about writing and mm -hmm. so I it's just a great mix of what I enjoy doing um, being creative, thinking creatively And you do that issues. so well because I follow you more now for your businesses oh, thank for, you. and, and how you promote them. I started out with finding you because of the book. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, when I first started out, I would try to find every Mississippi author, every right. Mississippi artist all around, and I would put them on my Facebook page just to introduce people to them. So I ran across you. You were doing a book signing, and I put your stuff out there. But after that, I was getting into momentum. I was like, right. wow, so I love that. Thank you. Now tell us, when was this book published? Your well, I have book? two books. Yes. Um, the first book was published in 2006. And the and first one the, was? The first one was The Color oh, of Love. Oh, The Color of yep, Love the was Color of Love is okay. actually my first book. 
Um, and it published. I'm behind y'all because I thought that was first and this was second. This was actually the first book. Okay. And um, I believe it was published in 2006. It might have been 2007. Okay, see, that, so, so I got been, in on the tail end because yep. I came to know you like 2008 kind of. Right. Okay. Um, and then, so this book came out then. Um, it was, I believe, the same year that my first child was born. So, you know, we weren't busy or anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So tell so, us how that came about. Why did you write that? Tell us about the characters. How do you make your characters? How do you start writing? What do you do? This what, particular book, um, this summer of 1999, so 20 years ago, mm -hmm. 20 years ago, I was a summer missionary um, with the Mississippi Baptist Convention in Arizona. Mm -hmm. And we were in 10 different churches in 10 weeks. So mm -hmm. every week we moved to a different church and we would stay with a different family. Mm -hmm. So my summer missions partner and I stayed with this very, very kind woman um, in Arizona. And for one of the first times all summer, we had separate bedrooms. And the bedroom that I um, was in had a pink bedspread with pink pillows <laughs> and precious moments wallpaper. And in the bathroom, there were pink cotton balls and pink Q-tips and pink, I mean, the whole thing was in pink and red. And I thought, well, there's gotta be a story mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So when I got back to um, school for my senior year, I took a creative writing class and we were supposed to write a short story. Mm -hmm. So I took that room and I built a story off of it. Um, I built a story of a teenager coming into this room for the first time and thinking, what in the world happened here? <laughs> um, and that's where this story comes from. And that, that, that room was her grandmother's room um, in her sister's home. And her grandmother had passed away, but her grandmother loved the colors of pink and red because those were the colors of love. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the title of the book came from. And that's um, her story. And I started there with a short story. And then several years later, um, I had some extra time, which hasn't happened again, but I had <laughs> some extra time and I just felt this call to write. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just, I prayed about it and, and I just felt this call to write and it mm -hmm. wasn't so much always about being published. I love being published. Right. I love seeing my name right. on there, but just to write, just to get those mm -hmm. words out. And so I took that short story and began to explore who those characters were and maybe what was going on in their lives and mm -hmm. um, and wrote this first book. So who published the, this book? Was it self-published or a publisher? And how long did it take you to write the story and publish it before, oh, between dear. writing and publishing it? Um, I'm trying to remember. Because I'm trying to help other authors out there because they the, want to know these journeys oh, and how absolutely. this goes. Yes. Um, <laughs> since this book came out, the publishing industry has just oh, been turned on its head. It has. Um, the publisher for both of my books is no longer in business. Okay. So that is another um, thing that authors face. They is do. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of publishers out there that come and go. Right. Um, this publisher is no longer in business, and so I am currently shopping for an agent who will hopefully get me in front of some okay. of their publishers. So that's where I am in, in that journey. Okay. But this publisher was Oak Terra, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they were, um, at the time, on the leading edge of some of those changes in publishing. Mm -hmm. They are what is known as a print-on-demand. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a hybrid between right. self-publishing and a traditional absolutely, publisher. So absolutely. you you don't have to pay them to do the editing. Mm -hmm. the, they did the cover copy. They put it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble mm -hmm. and they took care of all of those right. pieces mm -hmm. and provided some marketing help. Mm -hmm. But if I wanted copies to sell, then I had to buy those. So they're kind of a um, an in-between there and mm -hmm. helped out with I love, that, I love to ask the authors about that because so many people ask, how do you get published? How do you do this and that? So everybody's story helps them put, put that together. And, and everybody's understand. story is, is so different. It is. Um, it I've is. met people who have been very, very successful with self-publishing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, and people who have not been so successful right. with self-publishing. And, and then there's the agent and um, independent publishers and traditional right. publishers. So there's Absolutely. a lot of a lot Absolutely. of options when it comes to being published. Wonderful. Now tell us about the second book. Now that's where I came in when I right? I knew you from this one. So this book came out in 2014. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was expecting my first 
son in 2006. So mm -hmm. he was born in 2006, and I started this in 2006, and this came out in 2014. <laughs> right, so we So understand. we're talking a number of <laughs> right? years that it took to actually write and this we book. We understand. Um, a lot, lot happened in there. Mm -hmm. But um, I was actually, I overheard a conversation about um, a, a couple that their parents had 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 them picked out for each other for mm -hmm. many years since their childhood and okay. I thought you know oh, this is the 2000s okay. how does this happen and okay. I thought but what if okay what if a modern day a modern day take on the arranged okay. marriage what if what what would that look like okay. to have a modern day arranged uh, marriage okay. and of course it's not going to go easily the main character there um, is not excited about her parents mm -hmm. choice what's her for name her. her name is Evie mm-hmm um, and she was not excited about her parents' choice for her, and mm -hmm. it is just her story of right. rebellion and her story of um, finding her own way. And her parents aren't perfect either, so they've got their own issues okay. happening in the background. How do you come up with their, your character and their personalities and, and how they express themselves in the world? Where does that I'm come from? I'm still working on that in my most recent book. And, and the goal is that every book is better than the last oh, one yeah. because you've learned and, and you've Absolutely. studied. And there's so many great free resources out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, one of the best podcasts and blogs, if you're looking to learn more about writing fiction, mm -hmm. is K.M. Wyland. Okay. Um, and she has a, a podcast. I was actually listening to it on the way okay, over wait. here. Okay, wait. K.M. Wyland. W-E-I-L-A-N-D, I believe. Okay. Um, helping author writers become authors, I oh, think is the name okay. of her, her podcast. okay. Helping writers become authors. Okay. And it's a podcast, and it's free. It's great, great, great information. She does have some books out there that are great about okay. writing, and that's been really helpful. When it comes to developing characters, my last, the book that I'm working on now that I'm editing, um, I started studying the Enneagram about a year ago, and mm -hmm. it's a personality typing system. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of information out there about how different people's personalities affect how they react to situations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so the Enneagram helps us to understand ourselves a little bit, and mm -hmm. there's some controversy over where the origins of that comes from. Right. But when you're developing characters for a book, it's a great tool yes, to say somebody do, with this react. particular yes, type of personality yes. will say these kinds of things, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they will react this way mm -hmm. to certain situations. Mm -hmm. And so building a really deep character um, you can also use the Meyer, Myers-Briggs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, personality testing. assessment. Right. You can dig into that and, you know, not even knowing what your own mm -hmm. personality type is, you right. can dig into that about how other people react to things, and that helps to, to develop some of those characters. Okay. And the book I'm working on right now, I actually have a notebook that and I what started. What is that book? Can you tell us about it no. or is it a secret? Well, okay, well, let me ask you this question. Okay. Is there going to be a second part to the arrangement? Now, we got to learn more at, at the end and having a baby and all this stuff. Uh, we got to well, go into all I <laughs> do not have a crystal ball, so I cannot tell you. Um, I cannot, I, I can't say that there will never be. Um, well, we want one. The, we want the whole rest of the story. The book that I am uh, writing now, I hope that it will be a three book series. Okay. That's that's my goal right now, mm -hmm. is that it will be a three book series. Um, I'm still in the editing phase of it. Mm -hmm. um, I have a critique partner in Oklahoma and we both write and mm -hmm. so we send each other our work. Mm -hmm. We've never met in person, we met on a Facebook group, but we send each other our work. And she is not afraid to take this and say, Hillary, this part needs some work, mm -hmm. or I, there's no point in this whole chapter, you just need to delete it. And that's another point. I have met the best people that have helped me with, on my journey with my book and promoting and doing all kinds of stuff that are just Facebook friends. And I, mm -hmm. I don't say just Facebook friends, but I only know them through Facebook. Right. Right. So that is, don't poo-poo on that, you know, right, really absolutely. have those relationships because a lot of people can give you some valuable information. Well, and when it comes, and it comes to a critique partner, having somebody that can look objectively at mm -hmm. your work, mm -hmm. um, my mom and my sisters and my dad read <laughs> <Right>. my work, <laughs> but they're going to love it because they love me. And they may point out where some commas need to go mm -hmm. and some typos, um, but I don't know that they're going to say this character right, really needs some right. 
come right. work here or this doesn't seem like the reaction that somebody would well, I don't would know. actually they're get. probably not, not like my mom because my second book I was like well mom what do you think she's like I hate it I don't <laughs> like it at all I, I don't like that at all and I kind of knew because in my second book I used a lot of southern dialect and breaking verbs and you know the country southern I right, like right. That she was like I don't like it I was like mom well just tell me your favorite poem just one pick one I don't that's not one that I love <laughs> And I was like, really? But at the end, I kept, mom just read it over and over and again. And it took her a while. And to, I explained to her what it was about. And she was like, I love it. I love it. So anyway, if, if, my, if it passed my mom's test, so that critique it's partner is yes. great that you have somebody that somebody you know. Somebody that can help and mm -hmm. go through there and see things because, um, a book is like your child. Oh, we you've talk poured, about that. It, you've poured your heart and yes. your soul into that, <laughs> and it's hard to look at it and objectively say, mm -hmm. you know, I really, really right. love this particular line or this babies. particular mm -hmm. scene, yeah. and I don't want to cut it. And then the critique partner will come up and go, that one's got yeah, to go, yeah. right? Um, and so that that helps a lot yes. having somebody to come in and mm -hmm. and to help look through that and, and to look at those characters and That's to say wonderful. I like this character's development mm -hmm. but this one needs some work. So how do you project and look ahead and say this is going to be a three book series? Um, I've not done a series before mm -hmm. so this is my first step into that. Mm -hmm. um, this book that I'm writing now I've had the idea of it for years mm -hmm. but I did not think that I had the skill to pull it off mm -hmm. until recently. I'm still not sure I've got the skill to pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> Doubt is a huge part of a writer's life, it is. but I've got the first draft of it um, done, and I am about three quarters of the way through my first full round of mm -hmm. edits, and I've had some good feedback from some critique partners already, so I'm hopeful, but I know looking at this book that the overarching plot line can't be done in 100,000 words, Okay. And, okay. and looking at that I just, I know where this book needs to sit. And okay. I, I knew when I started, and this was unusual for me, when I started this book, I knew what the last line was gonna be. Oh. Like I, I just, I knew what was gonna happen at the end. I love it. And I've actually added, that line is not the last line. There's another couple of scenes that come after that, mm -hmm. but I knew where it was gonna end. Mm -hmm. And I also knew that that was not the end of the story. That was really just the beginning of the okay. story. Okay. And it was gonna set up more. And so I think a three book series gives me time to develop and I'm still Love working it. on exactly what that plot is going to look like. Love um, it. Most writers are known as either a plotter or a pantser. Mm -hmm. So they write by the seat of their pants. <laughs> and I That's am me. I am a pantser all day long. <laughs> That's me. I am a planner. If you ask any of my friends, they'll be shocked to find out that I don't plot my books out. Mm -hmm. um, this particular book I've plotted out, I don't know, about three or four different times really? and none of the plot line is the same as anything that I plotted out. I just finally sat down and started writing. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And I've pulled a few things like when I get stuck I'll go back to some of those things that I wrote down and went these are things that could happen mm -hmm. and I've pulled those in but but I write by the seat of my pants and you just you never know what your characters okay. are going to do. And for your cover and this is so important for writers and it, it's kind of how you need a theme and the colors kind of different colors but a whole look to go together. Have you thought about that to, you know to try to get that together like I have not most this? of the time if you work with a traditional publisher they help you with they that help you with it, that yeah. they have artists mm -hmm. and they know what's expected in that genre mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what sells oh, in that right. genre Absolutely. and so mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to let an artist take right. care of okay. that part. <laughs> right. I just thought and maybe you had an idea of what you want I the look of it or nothing like that. I now don't. tell us before we go any further, now give us your website for your business and your author uh, okay. website. My author website is really, really easy. It is my name, mm -hmm. HillaryHamblin.com. Spell that out one because L, one L, I was going to say it's one L. H-I-L-A-R-Y-H-A-M-B-L-I-N.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. So that's my author website. I have a blog there. Mm -hmm. You can find me on Facebook at um, Hillary P. Hamblin, I think, or Hillary Hamblin author. author Maybe it's yeah, Hillary it Hamblin is, author on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where that information is. I have an email list and I send out an email every month with some recommended reading. Okay. Um, one of the most important things about writing is to read a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I read a lot and my kids love to read and so I usually have some recommendations on what I'm reading, nonfiction and fiction mm -hmm. and what my kids are reading. So I have some And her next recommendation is gonna be Meet My Mississippi Children's Book. <laughs> 
send it to me. Oh, we'll put absolutely. it out there. Yes. Um, so that's for for the author side of things, and then for the business, advertisingmomentum.com uh -huh. is my business website. Okay. Okay. And I can spell that too. It's really uh -huh. long. Yes. <laughs> A D V E R T I S I N G M O M E N T U M dot com. Advertisingmomentum.com. And we're going to put that down at the bottom Great. of the screen so that everybody will see that. Great. And we have a, a blog there. We have a lot of free information about marketing for businesses. Mm -hmm. um, we do a lot of you work. You really do. <laughs> we do a I, lot I of work. stay on your page with that stuff. Healthcare. You do. Um, we do a lot of work with um, home improvement retailers and, and that type of industry. And we do a lot of work with nonprofits. Um, and we work with other businesses as well, but that's kind of our, our niche. Mm -hmm. And we've got a lot of information about social media marketing, about marketing in general, about business, um, all there on the website. Mm -hmm. And then add momentum, mm -hmm. A-D-M-O-M-E-N-T-U-M, -M -E on Facebook and on Twitter. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. What would you expect uh, when someone came in to you to say, I need to grow my business, I need help, we don't know how to get it out there, We we're just small, we don't have a huge budget. What, what can you do for me? Help, help. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just sit down and talk about the business. Mm -hmm. I tell every prospect that we work with that it is their business. Mm -hmm. That is the number one thing I want them to remember is we want to help them grow their business, but it is their business. Mm -hmm. And anything that we do is gonna be based on what their goals are. Mm -hmm. And I don't ever want a business owner to feel like I'm telling them what they have to do or that I know more about their business than they do. We work with people who've been in business for 20 and 30 years. They know their business, mm -hmm. they know their customers. They just need some help on the marketing side so they can continue to take care of where they excel with mm -hmm. their customers. Right. So we're gonna talk a lot about what their goals are. And if they don't have goals, we're gonna help them to set some goals. What is it you want to accomplish mm -hmm. this year? Mm -hmm. Who is it you're trying to reach? Mm -hmm. Facebook is the largest social media network out there. Mm -hmm. And I know there's rumors that Facebook is dying, but it is not dying. Right. The millennials are still on Facebook. They may not be posting <laughs> right. to Facebook right. because we're right. on Facebook exactly. and they don't want us to know what they're doing. Exactly. But they are, they're, there. they're still on Facebook. Exactly. They're still looking through Facebook. Exactly. Instagram is growing by leaps and bounds. Oh my goodness, and it's yes. owned oh by my, Facebook. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are some businesses who do well promoting themselves on LinkedIn or on um, Twitter, mm -hmm. doing videos. So we're really going to talk about who their target market mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. and make sure that the content that we suggest to them is written in the language, the words that their target market wants to hear, right. that they're accustomed to, that they're looking for, mm -hmm. that their images are appealing to the folks that they're trying to reach mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and help them to come up with a strategy to reach their specific target market and to reach their specific goals. Mm -hmm. So those are those are all parts of the conversation. We also talk about budget, mm -hmm. which is always a big part, and that's yeah. a question everybody asks, is, right. how, know, much? how much how is much? this gonna <laughs> cost me? And I tell people there's a, an advertising agency in New York, a, a huge, very famous old advertising agency, and the guy there says, I can give you quality, um, I can give it to you fast, and I can, um, let's see, quality, I can give it to you fast, and I can give it to you cheap, mm -hmm. but you can only choose two of the three. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> how quickly we're gonna get you to where you wanna go, it's dependent on how much um, you're willing right. to spend. Mm -hmm. um, social media advertising, paid advertising is different than buying mm -hmm. ads mm -hmm. um, for a radio station or a newspaper or a television station. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's billed a little bit differently, and the way that you, what you pay for is a little bit different. And so we talk about all of those kinds of things and just find out what is that, what is that budget? What is it right. that they're trying to reach and what's the best option to help them get the most for their time and their money. So tell them where you're located and your office hours, because I pass by your office all the time going to the subway over there in that little Okay. <laughs> um, we are in, we are in South Chile. All the time. In, um, in the Town Creek business, Park um, near Subway. Mm -hmm. We've got a, a sign over there, and we are typically there from 8:30 to 4:30. Okay. Um, we normally see clients there by appointment, okay. so they can 
um, look on, on Facebook or my website and, and get the phone number and mm -hmm. give us a call. Okay. And we sit, go to a lot of our clients' businesses mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. for most people that have a brick and mortar, being able to step away from that mm -hmm. for um, right. an hour, an hour right. or an hour okay. and a half mm -hmm. to drive to right. my office, meet with me, and then right. drive back, that really cuts into their mm -hmm. day. Right. And we can come in and sit and, and meet in their place of business. Mm -hmm. And then you can see what's going on And then we can see with, what's yeah. going on mm -hmm. and, and that gives us a good feel for their business mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So we are really, really focused on who our clients are mm -hmm. and what's best for their business because at the end of the day, what we want is to look back at those goals that we've set and to be able to say we met them. Wonderful. Um, and to be able to see that that business has grown Wonderful. and that they're able to do the things that they want to do. And a couple of questions that we ask just about all of our clients. Um, two questions. One is, if we reach these goals, what does that allow you to do? Mm -hmm. And for some people, it allows them to hire more people, which is good for the economy of North Mississippi. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's not just about helping that business person to grow, but it's helping them to grow so that they can add jobs so that more people in our yes. community can grow. Absolutely. Sometimes it means they get to take their family on a vacation and they haven't been able to do that in several years. Mm -hmm. Um, so it can be as personal as that, as being able to send a child to college or pay for a family vacation or as broad as adding jobs to the economy. So what does it allow you to do if we help you to meet these goals? Wonderful. And then the other question is, if you don't do anything, if you change nothing, will you meet these goals? And if you don't meet these goals, what does that mean? Mm -hmm, what mm -hmm, does that mean? Mm -hmm. And sometimes that means that they have to let people go. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a hard reality of business is that in small business and entrepreneurship, a lot of times it's feast or famine. Right. right. Um, it's up and it's down. And when it's down, you, you either have to let people go or you suffer personally or sometimes right. both. Um, we want to help businesses to get to that steady place and to take their business Wonderful. where they want to get it. Well, as you can see, she has so much to offer all of us. And you get in contact with her, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, go to that website, check these books out. You can get them on Amazon. Is that correct? Um, at my website right now the because web the publisher website. is no longer in okay, business. Right. Um, I have a few copies of the book left and they can be ordered through my website right now. Wonderful. Thank you again for our time here. Meet my Mississippi authors and artists. Always, always celebrating the South and promoting a positive Mississippi. Patricia Neely Dorsey. Thank you. It's inside me, girl, it's in the air. It's who I am through and through. It won't take long till it gets to you. It's everywhere. Mississippi magic is sweet and lasses breeze. God, country, family, that's what it means.